Hi, everyone. Um, uh, welcome back. Um, this week is our second series of three. Last week, we covered um, just the basics on um, eye safety, regulations, fish species, and equipment. Um, this week, we're going to cover how to rig your rod, how to use tip-ups, and where to fish. Um, I'm Maggie Lindsay with South Dakota Game Fish and Parks, and um, we're going to, first thing we're going to do, this was a collaboration amongst a lot of people, so we'll go ahead and introduce them here in a minute. But first, if you didn't read the chat, what I want you to do is I want you to get in the chat, and I want you to tell us your favorite lake in South Dakota that you like to fish, or a lake you would like to fish in South Dakota. And I know some of you are listening from Nebraska. You can drop your lakes in there too if you wish, but we'd like to know some of the lakes because later on, um, we might just pull up one of your lakes and take a look at it and show you where to fish. So anyway, so since this was a, a group effort, we're gonna meet the experts. Hi, I'm Clint from the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks in Rapid City. I'm the group programs coordinator, naturalist, and we're out here ice fishing today. Hi, my name is Katie Schlafke, and I'm a volunteer coordinator and naturalist at the outdoor campus in Rapid City with South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. My name's Kelly. I'm the education program assistant out of the Game Fish and Parks Fort Pier office. Hi, I'm Lori Root with Game Fish and Parks, and I am the community programs coordinator out of Rapid City, and I'm also a naturalist. I'm Maggie Lindsay with South Dakota Game Fish and Parks, education services coordinator out of Pier. And we're going to teach you all about ice fishing today. Hi there, I'm Connor Olson. I'm Trent Sasala, and we are with the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. Hi everyone, I'm Kyle Potter with South Dakota Game Fish and Parks here in the Fort Pier office. And I have been ice fishing most of my life since I was about five. And you can do the math on how many years I fished. Hi, my name is Bob Hanton. I'm a fisheries biologist with the South Dakota Department of Game Fish and Parks. And I've been ice fishing for over 30 years. So those are our experts that helped us with this program. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about last week, I guess talk a little bit about what we talked about last week. We talked about the different kinds of rods that you can use. So what we're going to show you next is how to rig those rods. But first, I just forgot to mention, if you have any questions along the way, please put them in the chat. And at the end of the session, we'll answer your questions. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and show you how to rig your rod. I'm going to show you three different ways that we like to rig our rods that have been successful for us in the past. The first one is the most simple. It's just a basic jig, ice fishing jig, tied on the end of your line. This one, and then you'll want to put bait on the end of this jig, and you just put it in the water, and it's for active fishing. You'll be jigging the rod up and down in the water until you fill the fish bite and set the hook. Another way is to have a jig, and I'm going to let out a little bit of line so you can see this a little better, and to have a bobber stop. So you have a slip bobber right here that goes back and forth, line, that, that pulls back and forth, and it will stop at the bobber stop. The bobber stop is adjustable, so when you determine the depth that you want to fish, you're going to slide the bobber stop up, and the bobber will stop there. And then at the end of the line, once again, you'll have a jig that you'll put you know, a wax worm or a minnow head or something on. Usually a little bait on that. You'll need to put a little bait on that. So that's the next setup. Very simple. This is a good one because you can sit and watch the bobber. Um, when you get a fish, you'll see the bobber. Usually these ice bobbers, we'll show you in some other videos how they sit in the water. But um, you'll see this bobber go up and down and get pulled under when you get a fish. So the bobber is kind of nice because it gives you something to focus on. You don't have to concentrate on feeling the rod. Right here you can see that the bobber is being pulled underwater. That's because there's a fish biting on it. So you can see how that bobber indicates when you have a fish. Um, what Kyle's going to do is he just set the hook and he's hand lining the fish up. And he caught a nice bluegill right here. Another 
Another way is to add, we have a slip bobber on this one, just like we did this one, but we just did a bare hook. You might not want to fish with a jig, you might want to just fish with bait, for instance like a minnow. So that's where just a plain hook will do, but you're still going to need some weight. So right now I just have one split shot weight on it. So split shots are great because you can add one or two or three, however much weight you need, but you don't want it right next to the hook. You want to move it up just a little bit so it looks more natural for the fish. Once again, we have that ice fishing slip bobber on and the bobber stop. But the difference with this one is we put a spring bobber on it. This is called a spring bobber. It inserts in the end of your rod. Some rods come with it already built into the rod. And this is a great setup if you're fishing small fish, like small panfish with a real light bite. And what happens with these heavy rods, when you get a fish and you see it pull, it doesn't always show. So it's real nice with the spring bobber because then when you get a little bite, you can see it move. Now you don't really need a bobber on this. I was just doing that for this setup. You can do it without the bobber and just watch the spring bobber and see it just kind of move. And when it goes down, you know you got a fish. So Kyle's going to show you how the spring bobber works. I'm going to slow it down for you so you can hopefully see it a little better. But you can see the spring bobber at the very end of his rod will go down. Then he's going to pull up, set the hook, and reel in his fish. So these are just some of the basic tackle. We kind of showed tackle before, but these are the bobber stops. Just simple little bobber stops that you buy at the sporting goods store. These uh, floats are specifically for, for ice fishing. They're supposed to be less um, build up of ice on them. You will st still get one, some build up, but they're very simple, very inexpensive, easy to fish. And if they're too big, you can cut them down. If you're fishing a lighter jig, you can cut them down smaller. And then, of course, we showed you earlier, but the array of jigs that we have. And, of course, a bare hook and split shot. So that's all you really need for tackle and setups for ice fishing. The next thing we're going to talk about is finding bottom. It's important on depth, how deep you want to fish for each species of fish. And so when you're ice fishing, it's hard to know how deep that water is. So we've got a few little tips, easy, simple tips to show you how to find bottom. So folks, when you want to fish with a bobber and you don't know how deep anything is, um, they have a clip-on clip weight called a depth finder, depth sounder or depth finder, or however you want to term it. Um, they, what you do is you clip your weight on your hook, you make sure it doesn't slip off, and then you proceed to let the line out until you hit the bottom, and then when you hit the bottom, You're going to see slack line. You're going to be on the bottom. So then you take your bobber, and there's a hundred different styles of bobbers out there. This style of bobber you can adjust. There's a foam bobber you can adjust to the weight of your lure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this is the bottom right here by my fingertips. I want to be up about two and a half feet off the bottom. So from here to here is a roughly two and a half feet. I'll take my line and all I'm going to do is wrap it around and be fairly easy on this one. I'm fishing fairly shallow water. As you can see now, this is this is all the deeper I'm going to be fishing from the bottom or from the top of the top of the water. We're going to remove the depth sinker, clip it on my jacket, take a wax worm or some type of a grub hook it onto my hook we'll drop it down the hole and ideally if you have it weighted just right the bobber will stand upright 
So when I started ice fishing, I had just the basic stick with the string wound around it. And the way that you find the bottom with this is like with the tip ups, you just use one of these little bottom finders and they come in many beautiful colors and you just hook it onto your, uh, your hook of your jig here and then you send it down the hole. And this one, you just have to unwind these. So here we go. Going down and you just keep going and going and going and going and going until it stops, which is about to happen right now. And then you take your, um, you take your hand and you go down here and you come up however far you want to fish off the bottom. And six and a half inches, give or take a quarter inch is where you want to be right now today. So then you take your spring bobber and you just push this spring. So there's a little slot on here and you slip that onto your, your line. You bring it back up here and get your, get your weight. Stick that back on your thing. You put a wax worm on your jig and you send it right back down there. And then within about, oh, probably four, four minutes, you'll have a fish on there. That's pretty much how it works for me. Sometimes, sometimes not. All right, here we go. We have the lucky red waxworm going down. And you just feed it right back down there again until it gets to your bobber. And you sit down on your bucket and you wait for that to go under. It should be about about four minutes. Man, four <laughs> minutes later and look what I got. <laughs> Her rock bass. <laughs> rock bass. <laughs> All right, now that you know how to find bo bottom, you know, Lori kind of taught you there and so did Kyle, but um, you're gonna, we're gonna show you how to use a tip up. Um, tip ups are pretty cool because you can, here in South Dakota, you can fish four different rods on the ice. Um, so you might only have a couple rods, but you can pick up a couple tip ups and have them set, you know, so you can kind of have them over, we call it our dead rod. You can have it as your dead rod off to the side and watch your flag to pop up. So um, um, Clint's gonna teach you here how to use a tip up. All right, for running a tip, we have a big heavy weight here that we're gonna just squeeze to the end of the jig temporarily. We don't have our bait on there yet. We're gonna drop that down the hole and let our rod not spin freely because if it spins freely, it'll uh, give you a rat's nest. Okay, so I hit the bottom, it quits spinning. Now I'm just going to reel it in a couple of cranks few more than a couple. Keep that from spinning. Bring up my line by hand. Take off my weight. Put it in my pocket. Grab my minnow. And I'm going to hook my minnow because I got a jig here. I'm going to hook him through underneath the jaw but Maybe a better setup would be to have a bear hook and to hook him right in the back along the, the lateral line. Get 
hook in, drop that down, hand feed the line down, down it goes, and set the flag right on the T there, test it, make sure that's going to go if a fish pulls. Ooh, that's pretty sensitive. Set that down, we're good to go. I would just have to wait for a fish. And a nice little perch. Goodbye, Chasey little guy. All right, now that you've kind of learned how to use, uh, how to rig your rod and, and how to find bottom and uh, how to do a tip up, now we're gonna turn it over to Kyle, who's gonna talk all about where to fish on the lake. And he's gonna take you on a walk through our website. So, all right, so we're moving around here. <laughs> Okay. Hopefully we didn't make everybody seasick with moving cameras and moving things around. But um, I'm, we're going to assume everyone can see the, the screen that we are showing. And again, I'm Kyle Potter, one of the fishery staff working for Game Fishing Parks in the Fort Pier office. Um, the easiest thing to do to figure out where to go fishing is to find our, our website. Uh, Google search uh, uh, South Dakota Game Fish and Parks. Find our website. This will be the home page on your computer. You can do any of the following that I'm going to show you either on the on a laptop or on your computer at home, or you can even do it on your phone uh, out in the field. But you can here you can buy your fishing license. You can look for hunting areas, uh, fishing locations, and camping and things like that. But if you look here at the very top line, it says maps. We'll click on the maps and the map screen will pop up. And if you look at this tab, it says public fishing areas. And in a little bit of time, a map will pop up of the state of South Dakota. In this map of the state of South Dakota, it'll, it'll after all the, this educational things will pop up as well and we won't describe those, but to make you make my life easier and your life easier. An aerial map is great if, if you know exactly where you're going and what, where you want to be. But what I like to do is click this four box tab and change it to like the street map. It'll be a lot quicker on your phone. It'll load quicker on your phone and it'll be a lot easier to find where you are because most people know the highways in the state, not so much um, what a drainage looks like across the state. Um, for so if you look at this map, there'll be the entire state of South Dakota and all the little blue dots and, and red dots, those are the boat ramps. Again, when you're ice fishing, you're not having to worry about a boat ramp because you're not really launching a boat. But what you do is you can start scrolling into certain areas. Um, I see a few folks like to fish in Deerfield. Thank you for commenting on that. So Deerfield Lake is a lake in, in the central Black Hills. Again, the Black Hills here in green and Rapid City and Sturgis and Spearfish. Uh, Deerfield Lake is located right in the middle of, 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 um, of the Black Hills. And if you scroll in small enough, you can see a, a series of eyes. Uh, the, the eyes along here in the Black Hills are trout streams. But the eyes in this, this 
this coloration of a light blue, you click on it. Uh, wrong eye. This eye hiding underneath the bolt ramp signature being Deerfield. Uh, Deerfield Lake, again, is a, is a popular fishery in the Black Hills. And you can click on what is that report viewer. And the report viewer, will another window will pop up. And this is all the information that we have as a fisheries biologist or fishery staff that's open, open to the public to see of all the information that, that there is out there. So we do lake surveys, management surveys to see what fish are in the lakes. And so in lake survey in 2020, and you can click on this download report tab. And this will pop up another window again, and it'll bring up a whole bunch of information about the lake, how it was surveyed and things like that. Um, one thing that's kind of cool is all the different species of fish that are found in the lake. Um, again, this is a lot of math for a lot of folks, but what if, if you would scroll all the way down toward the bottom, there are different sizes of fish for different, all the different sizes of fish caught for each of the lakes. Now, if you go back to that tab of, of the fishing report and you go to this, it says the type of report and it says lake map and you download the lake map. This lake map is printable. You can print it on your home computer at, on, on their printer at home. And this map is extremely easy to see. And you can see like the campgrounds around the lake, the, bo the two boat ramps, the other fishing access sites. Um, one person asked, said they really like the fish perch in Deerfield Lake. Well, yellow perch tend to, tend to hover near the bottom of the lake, like walleyes and perch typically are found near the bottom. Um, a lot of times you really don't like to fish in 60, 70, 80 feet of water for perch because if you do catch one, the air bladder is going to come out. So a lot of times we like to have anglers fish in that 30, 20 to 30, 20 to 40 foot range. So if you look at the lines, these are called contour lines all the way that wrap around the lake. And, and if you look at the lines and try to find your near the bottom within a few inches of the bottom of that 20 to 40 foot depth range. Uh, so that's an example of where to fish on Deerfield. And there's lots of places, as long as the ice is solid, you can access Deerfield Lake. Now, if I can get to the right tab, if you go back to the lake map and you go back to the lake, another person said they like to fish the Fort Pier National Grasslands on Richland Dam. Well, the problem is maybe I might not know exactly where that is. I, as a fish biologist in the Fort Pier office, I know right where it is, but you might not know where it is. So you can actually type it in here in this search. And if you type in Richland, and let it think for a little bit. It'll come up with all these options. And what you can do is experiment. Well, I know Richland Dam is in Jones County. And here's, here's the information on it. I'm going to close out of that. I'm going to actually hit zoom to. And this is Richland Dam. And there's the eye I'm looking for. The little eye buried behind here. There's Richland Dam. We'll hit the report viewer. And this report viewer is really cool because it has thousands and thousands of data entry points, but it'll auto search and find the information that you need to have. So again, Lake Survey report data here. And in our area, there is a, a little bit of a text summary about how to, what we found for fish and what the population of fish are in the lake. If you go back, to that report viewer, again, the lake map of Richland Dam. And the person really liked to fish the panfish on Richland Dam. Here's the lake map of Richland Dam. Again, you can print these off and take them with you out in the field when you're fishing. Um, Richland Dam is a man-made lake. You can see where the, the dam grade is here. And you can see the depth contours. Again, the deepest water around 15 feet or so, 12 to 15 feet is located on the north end of the lake uh, where the access points, the boat ramp and the shore fishing spots. If I was a fisherman, this point that sticks out into the, into the lake is a very predominant point. And fish like things that change. 
be at the bottom where it changes from sand to mud, or even this point that comes into the into the lake might be a great place to try to fish. Um, and if fishing Richland personally, that is a great place to try to target fishing on both sides of that point or out in front of that point. Uh, other places people like to see is Pactola, which is very similar to, similar to uh, Deerfield. So if we go back to the map, again, you're going to have lots of little tabs popping up. And again, we can type in Pactola. And we'll see what pops up. Pactola Reservoir, we'll try that. And there is the lake. We'll scroll out just a little bit so you can see where we're at here. Now, Pactola, um, Pactola isn't really showing up here, but it's there. And you got to look for that. Oh, there it is. You got to look for that eye. It's that one lake that the eye is hiding behind. Here it is finally popped up. So then you hit the report viewer and you can see what fish species were stocked, the popular stocking lake for the, for the trout species. Again, the lake maps and the lake surveys that we were found and all sorts of information on Pactola. Way more than enough information on Pactola. And this one being a, this portion of the lake, they show this only the far west end of the lake for some reason. Again, these lake maps and stuff aren't completely perfect by any means. But uh, another folks like um, Cottonwood Lake. Uh, there are, honestly, there are about 15, 16 Cottonwood Lakes in the state. I'm going to assume uh, Cottonwood Lake near Redfield, which is probably the most predominant Cottonwood Lake. Again, if you scroll through, just like driving a car down the highway, figure out where you are on the map. And Cottonwood Lake is south of Redfield, I'm assuming. That's the one that they're wanting information from. And Cottonwood Lake is this lake here. Again, you scroll in just until you see the eye the eye that pops up, that's like the information button. Hit the report viewer. And then we have a lake survey report and a stocking report. So lake survey report, again, lake survey with northern pike and walleye and yellow perch are the three main popular fish species found in the lake. And walleye abundance was really good at about 11 walleyes per net. And they show how about the sizes that they caught in their nets so between seven and a half to 27 inch walleyes as well. So there, there's some really nice fish. And it also, the information on our surveys can tell you, tell you the information on how fast they grow. So a lot of the fish were 17.8 inches by age of four, which is rather good growth for Lake, for South Dakota. Uh, there was, I'm sorry, but there was no lake map for Cottonwood Lake. For that Cottonwood Lake, there are, again, there's a number of Cottonwood Lakes out there. Um, again, there's a lot of information out here. There's hundreds of lakes that we survey throughout the years and stock, and all that information is, is available to you on this map. Uh, if you go back to that report viewer, and if, I'm gonna, if I change this to none, there is some other cooler things that are found on here. Again, there's hundreds, hundreds, if not thousands of, of reports on this thing. So you have to be a little wise in how you run it. But if you go into the type of report, you can find weekly stocking, stream surveys, stocking by year, stocking by lake, uh, again, lake maps, creel surveys. But what's one of the coolest things is what's called the net catch graphs. And depending on which portion of the state you are wanting more information on, let's say the southeastern area lakes. If you click on download report, and what this will show you is, is a whole series of information of all the different species out there that were caught in those, in those lakes. So for an example, if we want to look at, we're going to scroll down to walleye, walleye being near the end of the alphabet, we'll have to scroll down a little ways. So here's lake. 
2020 walleye net catches for the southeast portion of South Dakota. And it shows the lakes that they surveyed that year that they caught walleyes, Elbert, Brush, Highway 81 West, Madison, Cottonwood, and such. If you look at the, the height of the bars, again, you have to take this grain, uh, as a grain of salt because um, Twin Lake in Minnehaha County is a great walleye fishery. It ha they caught an awful lot of walleyes overall and a lot of fish over 20 inches. But you got to remember this, we're, we're comparing apples to oranges here a little bit because depending on the lake, walleyes might net better or fish might net better in one lake better than another one. So, but if you can look at this to can, kind of compare and see where you'd like to try to fish or target different sizes of fish. Um, if you don't see fish in these information in these lakes, um, there, you might have to do some more digging on that map but there's an awful lot of information out there. It, if, as we go here, if there's any information you guys wanna know on the lakes that you have in your area, and we're more than welcome to, to talk about this as well, you just type it in the chat, but there's all sorts of information out there. You just have to dig a little bit and hopefully this tutorial here today might help you find places where to fight, try to fish. A, a popular fishery in South Dakota for ice fishing. Another thing I'll show you too is if 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 I can get this to work now, <laughs> we're going to scroll into uh, Wabe Lake, which is a very popular ice fishery in the state. In Wabe Lake, north of the, the city of Webster, and if you, oops. If we scroll onto this legend and you scroll down off the legend, actually we're gonna close out of the legend. We're gonna to have to move my face around a little bit when we get into the layer list. If you click on the layers, there's a button here that says lake contours. We're gonna highlight that. We're gonna minimize this information. And if you start scrolling into, into the Wabe Lake, the contours will pop up. And what's really cool is you can use these contours on your smartphone, on your cell phone, and turn your GPS location on, on your cell phone, and you'll be able to see all this information and see your location. And this will be your handheld lake map while you're out fishing, ice fishing, all free of charge. You don't have to download fancy maps and pay subscriptions. All this information is out there already. And this this shows, it, shows you the depths and all sorts of different things. And depending on the lake, again, Wabe Lake. And this, this is another cool thing about it is now if I'm going to go back to the imagery of showing you the, the lake map, you can see the, the shoreline, the aerial map, and you can see the contours of all the different depths. A popular area to try to fish, here's the town of Grenville way on the north side. There's a lot of these little points that come out in the lake and all these points are really popular places to fish because there's a little sandy gravel points off here and it turns into mud and it's a great place to fish for perch and walleyes, especially in the evenings. Um, Cottonwood by Redfield, yep, Cottonwood by Redfield. Hopefully that was the one that I talked about for you and has it has been a great fishery for walleyes and perch and crappies over the years. Um, so all sorts of information is out there. Again, you can do this right on your smartphone. Um, with that, that kind of concludes a lot of our things we're going to talk about today on information. We do have a number of questions that we've gotten across on the chat. Oh, I lost the chat here. Okay, so we have one question that is on the list is, and Maggie, you want to sneak in here again too? Yeah, yeah, I'll be in here too. Which one, that Deerfield one? Uh, no, we'll do probably some of the questions. Okay. Um, somebody asked what bobber is best, a slip bobber or a fixed bobber. 
it kind of depends on the depth that you're fishing. Um, if you're fishing in a in a deep lake, and so you have to hand over, hand over, hand over. Um, if you have a fixed bobber, you're not going to be able to reel it in. You're going to have to pull that line in hand over hand. So if it's pretty deep, it might be better off to do a slip bobber. Um, if it's a shallow lake, like Kyle was in that video earlier, and he was only fishing at about five feet deep, there's nothing wrong with a fixed bobber. A fixed bobber is a lot easier, actually, on those mm -hmm. on those shallower lakes. Um, and it's also individual preference. Yep. So. Another question is, is how far off the bottom would you like to fish? And that all depends on the species of fish you're targeting. Uh, again, yellow perch and walleyes like to be right near the bottom, probably an inch to two inches, maybe tops of maybe of six inches off the bottom. If you're fishing bluegills, uh, bluegills like to be two or three feet off the bottom. If you like to fish crappies, uh, sometimes if you're in 15 feet of water, you might have to have that bobber five to 10 feet off the bottom of the lake, only five, five or eight feet down off the top of the water line. Um, it all depends on the species of fish that you're targeting. If you're a trout fisherman, um, which I am, my favorite species to catch through the ice are trout. Usually I try to fish about a foot off the bottom. Sometimes they're mid column in the water, but most of the time you're gonna catch them just like walleye or a perch, you're gonna catch them fairly close to the bottom. Um, Another question is how many lines can you have while you're ice fishing? Uh, four lines is what you can legally have through the ice. Again, two lines in South Dakota for uh, open water, but four. And a tip up or a, if you can, if you want a spear like northern pike or other species of fish in some of the lakes around the state, um, you can use a tip up, you can use a jigging rod, you can use a bobber line, and you can use a spear all four different types of lines. So there's all sorts of lines, but four lines is what you can use fish with in South Dakota. All right, what other, we had another question. We had a question about Deerfield on there, I saw. Yeah, right there. Deerfield, but what happened to the trout with all the yellow perch? Um, Deerfield is a very popular trout lake. They stock an awful lot of fish. Again, if you really, if we, if I'm going to show you my screen again, if we go back to Deerfield, we're going to go in here and we're going to go into stocking by lake. And then if we type in Deerfield, Deerfield in Pennington County, you can download the report in Deerfield Lake. This is how many trout that they stock and each year. So they stock an awful lot of trout over the years in Deerfield Lake. Um, Deerfield, what they do is they stock them at a fairly large size. And then in time, they grow, grow and continue to live and, and hopefully be caught by anglers out there. So there are still d trout in the lake. Um, there are, I, I'm not sure who wrote this question, but, but um, I fished Deerfield Lake and yeah, we seem to catch an awful lot of perch in that lake now. When we used to catch mostly trout and and fewer perch and now we catch a um, lot more perch and fewer trout. So it's right. just kind of the natural cycle of the lake. So as we're going here, if you do have another question, we're kind of winding down, but if you have more questions, please type them in the chat and we'll try to get them here before we're done. Another question that we had was uh, how do you how do you land a really big fish on a tip up? That actually is you have to be very careful. Uh, your hands, your hands as you're reeling in a fish with your hands become becomes the drag. So you don't want to just kind of wrap that line around your fingertips and just let that fish take off. You're going to you're going to lose that fish or maybe even lose a finger. So just kind of lightly with your fingertips pull in that pull in that fish. And again, make sure that line isn't wrapped around anything, especially your feet or your legs, because if you got a 20 pound northern pike on, on, a, on your tip up and he starts to run away, you're going to want to make sure that he can, you can let that line go and, and let him swim away. Otherwise, he might get away on you. So just take, take it really slow when you're hand over hand a tip up with a fish. Looking for more questions. 
Any more questions, folks? Yeah, go ahead and type us a few more questions. You've got some here. Or comments. <laughs> so we'll give you a few more minutes. So yeah, we're all we're all pretty passionate here about ice fishing. So if you've got a question to ask, go uh, ask it. I'm not going to tell you our secret spot, but you could tell us yours. But <laughs> <we're good. laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> so um, next week, um, I was going to talk to you a little bit. Of, we'll give you some more time for questions here. But um, next week, uh, we're going to have another series on Thursday evening. Um, and it's going to be a little more of the advanced stuff that um, we've been that you, you might want to cover for have for ice fishing. Um, we, in the last two, we've kind of talked about beginning, you know, the beginning, this is kind of targeted for beginners, but next week we're going to talk about electronics, teach you about electronics. Um, you don't have to have electronics if you're an ice fisherman, um, but they're nice to have. And if you want to learn about them, um, they're going to, we're going to talk about electronics shelters, which um, this time of year when it's so cold in South Dakota, it's really nice to have a shelter to fish in. I've seen some pretty tough people out there on the ice um hunkered over um okay you can answer that sorry we have a technical question on my phone so um we're, we'll talk about shelters um we're also going to talk about um how to fish for different species kyle and i touched on it a little bit but they're going to touch touch on it a lot more detail and we're going to interview a veteran ice fisherman and ask him questions such as um, if you could just choose one jig or, or one thing in your tackle box, what would you recommend somebody get? Because when you go into a sporting goods store, it's pretty overwhelming when you look up at the wall and see all the yep. jigs and stuff. You don't have to get complicated to ice fish. Um, just like when we were covering the rods, you don't have to have a $100 rod to ice fish with. You can have one of those simple jiggle sticks like Lori Root was using there. Um, we've caught a lot of fish on those. So um, we had a technical question. I think, uh, I'm sorry, somebody was asking how to get into the chat. So we're trying to help them out here. So, um, okay. I think that's, oh, here we go. <laughs> Is this presentation recorded? Um, we are recording it. We will have to let you know on the location. Do you have a location? YouTube. YouTube. We're going to put it on YouTube. Um, and so it will be available on the if hopefully on the game fishing parks website or on our facebook page we'll be able to link to it so um, we're working on that part of it so like i said this is our first series that we've done so we're, we're still in the learning curve <laughs> so um, any more questions thank you guys yeah um so kind of what I like to talk about. So last week I said, I, I love to watch the program Red Green. He always ends the program with keep your stick on the ice. So I always um, kind of to coin him, I say, all right, go out there and ice fish and keep your rod on the ice. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for everyone. Stay warm out there. <laughs>